certainly packed in here today. And high expectations in Philadelphia with this team this year. Joey Votto breaks his bat on the first offering from Halliday. Joey Votto is a good low ball hitter. He likes to hit the ball to left center field. He's not just a dead pull hitter. An MVP candidate indeed. He hits the ball to all fields. How about these numbers? A 369 mark with runners in scoring position and huge numbers late in the game. Votto bangs one out to Chase Utley. And a 1 2 3 start for Roy Halliday. Jay Bruce. Speaking of built from the farm system, here is one of the prize prospects from the Cincinnati minor league system. Jay Bruce, former first round draft pick, and a bouncer out to Chase Ugly. And Roy Halliday picking him up and putting him down. Six up, six down as we head to the bottom of the second. And the man who made his postseason debut here last year, Cliff Lee, picking up the win for the Texas Rangers. Ten strikeouts for Cliff Lee today. And Texas strikes first. Their first postseason win since 1996. In their first postseason since 1999. Cliff Lee went seven innings, just one run. Struck out ten. David Price with six and two thirds today. They gave up nine hits and five runs. Driven into right field, Worth right there. No walk, six strikeouts, and everybody said it might have been the best game he pitched all year outside the perfect game. Had the perfect game against the Marlins in Miami at the end of May. As if Halliday was just dialing it up for the postseason in his final regular season start. Joey Votto. Gives you an idea of the stuff of Halliday. Votto's a good fastball hitter. And, and he's is, late on a 91 mile an hour fastball. And he was the first time up, too. Remember, he broke his bat on the first swing and then jammed him on a ground ball to second. He's trying to tie him up inside. Let's see if they stay in there. On the ground. Long throw from Rollins, and it is a good one. A cannon from Jimmy Rollins. He was a guy that at the beginning of the year I thought Brian was I mean, you just spin the ball and hit chase set up to hit fastballs and pull everything but with the help of Brooks Jacoby their hitting coach and Dusty Baker he's started to hit the ball with some authority to the other to the opposite field and it's really helped him 22 home runs during the regular season and that goes along with 30 stolen bases he is a power speed threat. Drew Stubbs just his second year in the major leagues and he was on a fast finish during the regular season as well from August 1st hitting over 300 and there was a time there for Cincinnati the Reds made a deal for Jim Edmonds who was unable to go in the postseason with an Achilles injury that Stubbs playing time was in question and just as they brought Jim Edmonds in in a trade with the Milwaukee Brewers. Stubbs got hot and it ended up being a no brainer that Stubbs not only became the everyday center fielder down the stretch for the Reds but also the starting center fielder for the postseason and can really run and at this stage of Jim Edmonds career Stubbs is actually a better center fielder. Ball and two strikes. And a bouncing ball out to Rollins. Getting over. Perfect game lost. No hitter still intact. Bank Park, South Philadelphia. Beautiful. Great ballpark. What an electric atmosphere here. They sell out every day, regular season, postseason. Boy, they have something to watch this year. Plenty of stars offensively, Joe, as we talked about in the open. This is a club, the Phillies, that have won the National League East year after year. Perennial contenders in the playoffs now. They're starting to talk about a dynasty here in Philadelphia but arguably the three best starting pitchers you could assemble for a postseason run it reminds you of back in the mid 90s with the Atlanta Braves when no they were question. rolling out John very, Smoltz and very comparable Glavin and Maddox and even Steve Avery yeah 
but they kept adding two people adding people to those guys that were not necessarily compliments to them but made the staff that much deeper. It is Jason Wirth. And it's six innings of no hit ball for Roy Halladay. Sounds like Scott Rowland's turn to hit. Yeah. Strike one all night. Rowland has struck out twice. Argued a call in the fifth inning. Strike call. 19 out of 22 first pitch strikes. The only blemish, a walk in the fifth inning. The 0-2 to Roland. Just got a piece. So two and two. Two out seventh inning. Got it. Roy Halliday, seven no hit innings. And you better believe it is October time here in Philadelphia. Halliday, four outs away. Two gone of the eighth. Here's Stubbs. Strike. And still peppering that fastball in at 93. Again, a workhorse, nine complete games this year. Led the league in that category. Led an innings pitch, 250 plus innings. He's only thrown 93 pitches. last hope Brandon Phillips and one more piece to the puzzle for Roy Halliday and he's a first pitch ambush hitter if he delivers a fastball strike gave him a fastball Phillips took it probably the best pitch he will get to hit this at bat They struck him out in the fourth. Can't even begin to tell you how loud it is here, folks. Strike away the 0 2. A bouncer, Ruiz. In time, Roy Holiday has thrown a no hitter. of aces Roy Halliday postseason no hitter the first since 1956 Don Larson of the Yankees he's got company now after 11 years waiting for a postseason start he gets it tonight and he delivers his best start of his career a no hitter in the playoffs for Roy Halliday what a moment here in Philadelphia. Yeah, welcome to the postseason, Roy. 
And the last out, even though it was only about a seven or eight footer, was a tricky one. A masterpiece. An absolute masterpiece here in Philadelphia. One walk. It was a Jay Bruce two out walk. The difference between a perfect game for Roy Halladay. We send it down to David Aldridge. Roy Halladay, this was an interesting way to make your postseason debut. What wasn't working? I mean, you ever, it looked like everything was working tonight. Um, yeah, I felt like we got in a groove early. Uh, you know, Carlos, Carlos has been great all year, but. Uh, you know, he, he helps me get in a rhythm, uh, you know, throwing a lot of pitches for strikes, getting ahead, and then later in the game, uh, mix pitches well, mix speeds well. Um, so, you know, he's uh, he's done a great job for me, just trying to be aggressive. The last out of the game, obviously your emotions are in there. You're trying to win the playoff game, obviously, but what did you do there? Well, yeah, it's, uh, you know, winning the game is, comes first and foremost, and you know, in atmospheres like this, it's it's you know easy to focus on that, and uh, you know it's just it's it's been a great place to play all year, and uh, you know looking forward to continuing here. You said that you wanted to come here because this team had an opportunity to compete for a championship. What is the emotion going through your mind right now? Um, this is you know this is what you come here for. Uh, you know it's a good team; they know how to win, and. Uh, Come in, you try and chip in, be a part of it, and uh, you know it's it's been a great year. It's been a fun year, uh, and like I said, we obviously have a have a ways to go, but uh, you know it's a veteran team that knows how to win. I can't say enough about them. You know, Robin Roberts was the last 20 game right-handed winner for this team. He wanted to meet you before he passed away. You're now part of that legacy. Don Larson, the last pitcher to throw a no hitter in the postseason. What do you? What are your feelings about joining that group? Uh, it's surreal. I mean, it really is. Uh, you know, I just wanted to pitch here, pitch in the postseason, and uh, you know, to be able to go out and, and have a game like that, um, you know, it's a dream come true. Pretty good year for you so far. Congratulations, Roy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Back to you, Brian. Well, Joe, the calmest guy in the ballpark is the guy who just threw a no hitter in the postseason, Roy Halliday. He's still in command. Yeah, I bet if you took his pulse, even in the ninth inning, it was uh, under the radar. Just magnificent. But, but again, even the last out, that ball rolled out in front of the plate and actually hit the bat that Brandon Phillips had laid down. And it took a second for Carlos Ruiz to realize or how he was going to play this ball roll up right up to the bat and Carlos actually overran it and had to make the throw from his knees. It was not an easy play even though it was only about a seven footer because of the bat. But the catcher who had helped him all night long made the last play for him. Eleven no hitters in Philadelphia history. Oswald and Hamels. The other two in the H 2 O. No pressure on Roy on Friday, huh? Yeah, how do you follow that up? <laughs> so Nolan Ryan, the last to throw two no hitters in the major leagues in the same season until Halliday tonight. Virgil Trucks in 52 with the Tigers. Allie Reynolds did it with the Yankees in 51. And it was a Cincinnati Red who did it for the first time. Johnny Vandermeer in consecutive games for the Cincinnati Reds in 1938. And now. Roy Halladay a no hitter in the postseason. Halladay was just the fifth pitcher in Major League history to win a Cy Young Award in both leagues. He finished his career with 203 wins in 16 seasons.